Hello everyone, I'm making this video today for a sister who has a, a broken and contrite heart, a broken and contrite spirit. And I want to show in this video the difference between pride, which is of the soul because the spirit can't be proud. The spirit is of God and God doesn't have any pride in his spirit. So therefore, when people say spiritual pride, they're actually talking about pride of the soul or pride of life. And because people don't understand oftentimes, oftentimes, the difference between the spirit and the souls, the functions of the spirit and the soul and the Holy Spirit, who God is, who is all faithful to us based on his grace and the atonement of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for all those who would believe on him. Because they don't understand that the Lord is faithful. It has nothing to do with our faithfulness to the Lord per se, but rather the Lord's faithfulness to us. And I'm on this uh, website right here to help me get this point over. It's called BibleKnowingJesus.com topics contrite and it's five Bible verses about contrite and the little picture it has here is a broken and contrite heart God will not despise Psalms fifteen seventeen. so this is all about being humble humble to the Lord Jesus Christ realizing his grace and infinite mercy to us it has nothing to do with our ability to follow the Lord. It doesn't have to do, again, with our ability to follow the Lord. It has to do with the Lord's faithfulness to us, and that is the people that come to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. It has to do with his faithfulness to us rather than our faithfulness to him. And humility is the key realizing that we can do nothing apart from him. And the humble and contrite heart is what the Lord looks upon as a great thing. So I'm going to go down some of these verses here. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Now, Dr. Gross told me a long time ago, when you make wine, you have to crush those grapes. And when you crush those grapes, um, that is what brings forth the fruit, the, the nectar, if you will, that with, which produces the wine. So we have to be crushed oftentimes. We have to understand that we're not doing this that God's doing this through us. And that requires um, humility. And humility is usually found when we're crushed. It's not based in pride. So it's just the opposite. Now, I want to say at this point, I want to interject that lordship salvation works completely opposite of what the Bible says about knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. Lordship salvation says that we have something to do with our walk in the Lord. And if we're not faithful to the Lord, then uh, one brother told this poor sister, you can't hear Jesus anymore because they have a concept that they have something to do with the grace and infinite mercy of God towards those he has saved. They do not. And this is the problem with lordship salvation. This is the problem in understanding. You know, we talk about, you know, natural understanding. Uh, the natural mind can't receive things of God. That's exactly right because it deals with the heart. But it's also important that we have proper understanding. And that's why we use the Bible for reproof and correction. Otherwise, we're just yielding to our own understanding, our own corrupt hearts. And the way that we check our understanding is through the scripture. 
I, was, I, I don't want to get off on that, but I, I had to kind of straighten a brother out the other day about that uh, because I mentioned uh, accreditations or understanding the Bible. It's not pride. It's not the, the DD, THD, PhD. It's not that that I was alluding to um, that makes us, uh, it's, you know, um, uh, children or followers of the Lord. It's, it's by spirit. But you have to have a proper understanding of the scriptures and who Jesus Christ is and who we are, which is fallen humanity. So don't want to get off there, but I want to interject that. Um, Psalms uh, 5117, I'm reading right off this guy's web pages. Uh, the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God. You will not despise. That's Psalms 5117. Psalms 147.3. He heals the broken heart and binds up their wound. Isaiah 86.2. For my hand made all these things. Thus, all these things came into being. This is the Lord declares the Lord. But to those, this one, I will look to him who is humble and contrite of spirit, ah, spirit, and who uh, trembles at my word, um, the spiritual word. In other words, realizing that we're humble and contrite of spirit, we are nothing, that God is the one. God is the one. Brings glory to God to be dependent on the Lord. Again, opposite of Lordship salvation. First Peter 5.5 5, you younger men, likewise, be subject to your elders, and all of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but give grace to the humble. And that's First Peter 5.5. 5. And then it goes down about character of the saint, which is contrite, characters of uh, um, and it, let's see, I'll just read these verses off. Isaiah 57, 15. Isaiah 68, 2. Isaiah, okay, I'm sorry. I'm reading off this guy's website. So that's uh, Isaiah 57, 15 and Isaiah 66, 2. But, all right, so I'm going to close this now because I've given you enough Bible verses, I think, and hopefully making the point of what the Scripture says about humility and having a broken and contrite heart. And God opposes the proud. In other words, we have nothing to do with our own salvation. Our salvation comes through the promises of God, who cannot be a liar, who sends his son for the atonement of the sins for all those who would believe on him. So when God starts a work in you, when you receive the Holy Spirit and you're sealed for the day of redemption, I've said this before, your spirit is sealed. Your soul is being worked on. It, and it takes the Lord a long time to, which our soul is our personality, our emotions, our intellect, our understanding, you know, how everything uh, kind of fits together in individual personalities. It takes the Lord Jesus Christ a long time to... Um, let's just say reboot the soul into the likeness of Christ. And we have to realize that we have nothing to do with this. And if we did have something to do with it, it wouldn't be by grace we're saved. This is a continual grace and a continual salvation through the faithfulness of God Almighty because he knows we're fallible. Jesus saves us through his blood to the Father because of the Lord's faithfulness to us. It doesn't have anything to do with our faithfulness to the Lord. Because if it did, that wouldn't be grace. That'd be grace plus something else. And man, humanity, um, fallen human beings, are not capable of um, having anything to do with our salvation. It is the Lord's work within us by grace alone. And the opposite of humility is pride. 
So if we think we have something to do with our growth in the Lord Jesus Christ, we deceive ourselves. And that's why I just gave you all those verses. Because it has to do with grace to us. It has to do with the faithfulness of the Lord, not our faithfulness. The faithfulness of the Lord to us, but, um, to a broken and contrite heart. Somebody who knows they need the Lord and is not independent of the Lord and their own pride and thinking that only if I do this, that, and the other, and I don't sin, and I, I don't cuss, and I, whatever it is, like Lordship Salvation does, and that's exactly what it is. It's, is Jesus Lord of your life? Because if he's not Lord of your life, you're, you're going to be, God's going to throw you away. You'll be cast aside, thrown into the lake of fire. That's Lordship Salvation, and it has something to do with your own efforts. The Lord God of Israel is not concerned about your efforts. Jesus, it would make Christ and it would make Christ a liar and the Lord a liar, and the Lord God a liar, because it is all His mercy and grace to us. We don't bring anything to salvation but our own sin. And based on the mercy of Jesus Christ and the atonement on the cross of his blood. And if we think we have something to do with it, we deceive ourselves. The best thing that we have to do with it is to be humble and contrite and understand our need for the Lord's working in our lives. Um, and it is a horrible thing to tell another human being, especially somebody who's already broken at heart, that they can't hear the Lord anymore because they've moved down the wrong path or they got the wrong understanding. You, my friends, that think like that are the ones who are deceived, not the one that has a great need for the Lord. And you need to repent of your own solicial pride and understanding and go understand what the basis of the gospel is. It is not based on us. It is based on God's grace to us, God's faithfulness to us. Okay, so I don't want to blow a gasket here, but I am tired of people crushing other brothers and sisters in Christ because of some deluded concept they have that they have anything to do with their own salvation. Good day.